Hello, I am Locomotion Gonzalez, the artist of Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy from Scout Comics, and you are listening to Two Geeks Talking. Hi, I'm Tom Pescator, the writer of Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy from Scout Comics, and you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. It was a dramatic pause, but okay. <laughs> I forgot where I was for a second. <laughs> Good morning, afternoon, evening, we're going to Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries, and of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by two very talented individuals. They are co-creators of an amazing series called Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy. We're joined by the ever-talented Tom Pescator and Luciano Cruzado. How are you both doing today? All right, how are you? Doing good. How about you, Luciano? How are you doing? Very good. Thank you for having us. For those that don't know anything about yourselves as creative people, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Oh, I'm Tom Pescator. Uh Primarily worked in poetry before turning to comics. Uh, learned to read from comics, so I feel like it's like what I was supposed to do. Luciano Cruzado, alia, a.k.a. Uh, Locomotion Gonzalez. That's a random name I put on my Facebook a while ago and stuck. I'm a comic book artist been doing on and off uh, illustration work, character design, a bit of concept art, and now comic books with this crazy person right here. <laughs> well, you have to be a little crazy to be creative, don't you? I mean, that's kind of the epitome of being creative. That's part of it, I think, yes. I feel like that, yeah. <laughs> Tell us what uh, local... Sorry, <laughs> you got me with the locomotion word there. <laughs> Tell us what Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy is all about. Of course, being published by Scout Comics, which is an amazing publishing company as well. I kind of describe it as a uh, like a cyber jazz punk crime noir that has a little bit of like a hobo poetry to it. It's starring a biologically created labor in a dystopian world that's like parallel to Earth. And his partner is a alien, uh, an alien inside of a house cat, and they uh, they stumble upon a a strange conspiracy. It, it's supposed to be you know absurdist in a way where it's like all the tropes of uh, a noir, but without the backing of like why it's a crime, what's going on, you know. And it's like the tropes are meant to carry you through since you understand what they are, but. The crime and the world is entirely like strange and doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, that's what I loved about about reading the 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 three issues that I got to read as well too. Here, look, I love black and white art. I love crime noir. I think that's the most underrated genre ever. Mm. And and this is for both of you, and for not only from a writing perspective but from an art artist perspective. What is the most misunderstood aspect about the crime noir genre that you think people who don't follow it misunderstand? For me, I think that it's like purely genre fiction. You have to like like or be interested in like procedural crime kind of stuff to follow it or to be interested in it. How about from an artist's artistic perspective, uh, Luciano? How is the crime genre misunderstood maybe in the art world? Well, I never followed that genre closely. I'm more into science fiction, so I don't have a satisfactory answer for that. Uh, what it called my attention is that it was uh, all very natural for me, the fact that I had to do it in black and white. A lot of uh, people, when they saw the comic book, they saw, oh yeah, this fits of a lot of noir art, and uh, it, it, this guy has watched a lot of noir movies. I didn't. I just had to solve the pages uh, in black and white, uh, the same way, I guess, those uh, filmmakers had to solve their shoots in black and white, and the rest of it is just composition and the flow of the story. So I think there's a, a, a bunch of cliches or formulas that uh, people associate with the genre, and I think most of it is just basic storytelling. You tell what you need to tell, you, you, you go with the ambience that you need to create and the rest uh, is uh, well that story tells itself the one thing i love looking at when i look at a brand new comic at least for myself especially black and white 
black and white, you can't hide behind color. I think that is the, yeah. the tr- true epitome of, of being an artist, finding a clean line or getting that clean line when you're trying to put together a character and things like that sometimes is, is more satisfying than putting together the background artwork in the, in the panel. Yes, so, it is. As an artist yourself, then, how does black and white uh, improve yourself as an artist and how does it hinder you sometimes? Well, I think limitation, it's always uh, more interesting from the creative standpoint than uh, an abundance of resources because it forces you to solve uh, certain uh, narrative and graphic uh, problems with just a few elements. So that forces you to be creative with, with what you have. I also create uh, even extra limitations for myself, like, okay, I'm only going to use uh, three or four shades of gray at most, and I try to get the page solved. One of the first rules was uh, the page needs to be readable just with the line work and uh, the black spotting. And then I only have uh, two or three shades of gray to solve the rest of the composition. That, that kind of, of, of limitation, I, I think it always uh, helps you to improve, to help you focus on what's important uh, and not uh, overdone it and keep, keep yourself, keep the, the page clean and clear. Yeah. What was the initial idea that you're like, I have to write this on the page or else I'm going to forget it? Yeah, so that that's like that was like a long time. It was years actually of uh so originally I I conceived of the idea as like a um a psychedelic pulp and I wanted to write it as a, like in novella size like in the style of like a 1930s pulp novel. Uh with the the entire thing being at the end you realize that the cat was the narrator. <laughs> the entire time like he wouldn't he, he would do things that a cat would do but it would never be described as he's a cat until the end and then i just couldn't like i would get like chapters in and it just wasn't going so i just had this idea of this cat and this like bumbling gigantic like tank detective who's not very smart and then uh a friend of mine was like you're doing comics right now why did you ever think of it as a comic and i really had hadn't thought of it as that because i'd been carrying with it uh, it with me for years and then uh my son was born and at night like after he would go to sleep, I'd be exhausted. And I'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to troll the internet for artists. Look, if anything pops out. And then I ended up probably like 3 a.m. or something like on Luciano's page. And there was just like all this like cyberpunk dystopian, like all these like really intricate detailed, just like a living world that I'm staring at. And I was like, this is kind of like close to or the best representation of this world in my head. And then I click over and there's like a picture of Mickey Mouse, like eating a ch- like ready to eat a child, like Totoro. And I was like, I am contacting this guy right now. We're, we're definitely going to do this, this comic. So then I didn't contact him right then. I started writing the scripts with him in mind. I really hope he's not doing something <laughs> like right now. Well, I was going to say then, once you got everything put together, once you started building this world with Luciano in mind, what was the first, and you, you contacted him, obviously you've created yeah. two issues so far. What was the first image that you got back that you thought, man, this is way better than what I had written on the page? Probably any, everything. I, I literally rewrote every script as I got like images back and pages back. <laughs> and I like mostly threw out like all the dialogue to re to re-letter it every time i saw like him give the characters a different like body language especially mr nibs the cat i'm like all right i gotta i gotta like up the game in every issue <clears throat> more crazy things have to happen you know it can't just be like this like these two weirdos doing like procedural crime noir stuff in this world like it has to be ridiculous more ridiculous than it was going to be you know i gotta like equal the the art You've done it. The three issues I read here, and, and I want to, is there going to be more than three issues? Let me ask. Yeah, that. there's six. Okay, good. I, I'm happy now. This is a good thing. <laughs> like, I can't wait to see what crazy antics you have in issues four or five and six for not only the writing, but also the art as well, too. That's one thing I, that I love about 
a collaborative effort like this? You're working both together as writer, as artist. What's the communication like between both of you? How's the idea bouncing from an artistic side as well as a writing side back and forth when it comes to creating the world of Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy? Well, for me, I, I kind of see Luciano as like the director. I give him like an outline and then I, I basically, I don't think I've ever like turned a page away or anything like that. I want to see like what he thinks of this. Like, what is his vision? What does he get from these words? And we'll like talk back and forth a lot on messenger uh, about stuff. I, I wanted to give like near, like as far as I could, like a hundred percent freedom. How about yourself, Luciano? How has the creative process been for yourself? I know you talked about the limitations you set for yourself, but how are you going to push yourself for issues four, five, and six? Uh, what I, of course, uh, we are in a feedback loop with Tom, in which he already gave me the freedom that I want to uh, make, uh, to change angles or to make uh, the characters uh, act in a certain way or to amp up the, the action. I try not to cheat uh, when I deciding the shots for a scene. I'm having to work double because I'm, uh, I think a scene needs a very specific angle or it's not always the easiest. But I basically try to, to have fun and to be as ambitious as I can with the uh, settings and the choreography. So. I try to, to, to go along with the script and to have the most fun I can. I, I, I try to be graphically uh, engaged myself so I don't repeat the same formulas from one issue to another because that feel, uh, end up feeling stale very fast. Uh, so I, 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 I try to, I don't know, create little goals for each issue or for each page sometimes so I don't get bored. Overall, my goals, I think, is try to keep it as fresh as I can. Because if the artist is bored, then there's not much you can do about that. I mean... <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the, the script is always fun to, to make because, I don't know, there's so much bullshit going on and uh, I, I can go crazy, so how did you how did you come in contact with Scout Comics and how have they helped you from a comic publishing perspective? Originally, we, I was going to self publish it, but then I felt like we had enough done. I think we were around like three issues when we contacted them. Um, I think we had one done. And was it one done? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess one done and a little. Issue two one. was in process. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think what was what was most important. So originally. Like I, I had thought of it as a complete, just a graphic novel. So if you notice, like at the end, there's all that like meta text yeah. and things like that, which in itself is like three separate stories that uh, relate to the larger story going on. Yeah, it's kind of like building evidence. You get to like see the evidence, and there's like there's actual narratives like uh, within it. There's a third one that hasn't hasn't come up yet because I had to change the uh, the order because it was coming out single issue. So I had to kind of set it in the timelines that uh, the things happened in. So I think what was most important for me was that they allowed us like full use of the book, like no ads. We got to, we got to make the back cover. We got to do all the meta tech stuff. Joshua, uh, our editor, he was just, you know, just trying to see that it was like solid and tight. He, no story. Like it was full creative control of like story and, and anything we wanted to do. Just that he was just looking to see that it was, you know, professional enough to go, to go out. That's about it. That's really good. That's uh, that's wonderful to see. There's been a lot of really good publishers out there recently that have been gearing up the independent scene a lot more so than it has in say the past 30 years. So I'm glad to see that scouts uh, available and, and working with you to put together this amazing series as well too everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today who was that for you luciana you want to go uh all right yeah i think uh the first person that inspires me was my well my comic book teacher uh, is called uh, osvaldo walter viola oswald it's um it was he he passed uh 
uh, in uh, a few a few years ago. Uh, I met him when I was 15, I think. Uh, I took a course with him, and I learned the creative process with him. I learned from him that uh, we all uh, come from a place of uh, absolute mediocrity, and that's all right, and that we need to live with ourselves while we slowly grow. Uh, that failure is a natural, very natural thing until you get uh, what you want. And um, a very nice outlook and positive outlook uh, of the world in, in, in general. So, yeah, it, it was uh, Osvaldo. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of tough for me. Um, you know what I'm going to say in terms of comic books, just uh, getting me, just being just to where I am. I would have to say my mom. She didn't really know anything about comic books, but she bought them for me. You know, she took me to the comic store. My dad too. Just I learned to read from comics at like a really young age. I would like pretend that I, I would like memorize entire comic books and read them to people until I could actually read them. And uh, I don't recall. I have no prior memories to before I was reading comic books. Just for someone to be like, okay, this kid is re two year old is reaching out for comic books at a supermarket or whatever. I'll buy them. From a professional standpoint, you're both very talented writer and artist team, but also you're a, a writer and artist separately in your own right. And professionally, you have both come together to create Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy, and it is being published by Scout Comics. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you consider yourselves personally successful? Yeah, I don't even, <laughs> I don't know how to answer that one. I guess I'm doing what I want to do, you know? So I, I, I do. And I, that's been my, I feel like that's been my, my creative career, at least in poetry. I, I worked in poetry for probably like 13 years or something, you know? And I guess success in that is just dude, getting people, forcing people to read yourself printed chat books or small poetry collections you get. So I would say that I, I do feel like it, you know? Just being able to see the book and work with Luciano and the other people that I've worked with, I, I do. Yeah, I, I feel uh, absolutely successful. No doubt about it. Uh, because I get away with uh, living off uh, what I really like. And I kind of live a very simple life, but I live it on my own terms. So yeah, no doubt I feel successful. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? I'm, I'm all right with failure. I think it's part of it. Uh, does partial failure and does total failure. I, I don't think uh, total failure exists unless you stop trying. Let's say I'm, I'm okay with partial failure and total failure is not an option because I'm not going to stop trying to do what I want to do. Yeah, I feel like I'm like failing forward, you know, just like <laughs> I've, I've decided this is what I want to do with my life. And you know, <laughs> you're obviously not going to hit everything or anything, you know, but to be able to look back and see the, you know, volume of things you've created or and the people that you've created stuff with is like, you know, I don't really, I couldn't really call it failure, even if nobody reads it, you know? <laughs> yeah. The younger generation is looking at your work and they become inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's as a comic writer, an artist, an illustrator, or something creative, maybe you've inspired them through your past works and future works. And the fact that you, Tom, have the younger generation with you, maybe you're inspiring them on their path to be creative in some way, shape, or form. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? That's a tough question to ask. Um... I don't know. In terms of my son, I just, I try to, you know, instill some kind of value of creativity and art rather than like, you know, the everyday job kind of stuff going, go to school, get a job kind of thing. I mean, I, I was in academia for a while, you know, so I, I'm not opposed to that kind of thing, but I think like giving value to creative, the creative process in the same way you would to like, being an accountant or, or something like that, you know, and I try to not to be so 
revolutionary with him in his young age, but you know, the world doesn't always have to be the way it is, I guess. Speaking from a creative people standpoint exclusively, I can trace it back from the uh, success idea. I think uh, the creative people uh, can be very susceptible to the preconceived notions of failure and success. I think that's the first thing that uh, uh, young people need to erase from their minds. They need to be true to themselves. Uh, and I think uh, one of the most aspiring idea that you can get from any creator is the idea that no one uh, or maybe very few cases are uh, people that are immensely talented, uh, naturally gifted, that uh, the, the, the basis of your work is that you love it. You do it because you love it and you keep doing it until you eventually get uh, good enough at it. Uh, that art of a, or any creative endeavor is a lifelong thing. There's not a, a, a stop to it. There's not, okay, now I'm good enough. Or you're never good enough uh, from an uh, ideal standpoint. And you never stop growing. So I, I think that's important to, to take into an account. You go your own way and eventually you'll be good enough for some market. You'll be good enough to get jobs. But uh, that's not your problem. That's other people's problem. That's a market problem. That's an editor's problem. You just need to keep getting better and keep going your own way and being true to yourself. The last question, and Luciano, you're going to have to adjust your mic again. It keeps dropping. Uh, I think you're going to have to put your, where the mic is, you're going to have to put it more towards the middle. So, so yeah. move, move your microphone like back on the actual shoot. Yeah, I, I have uh, some technical, weird mechanical limitations yeah, yeah. To, to, to that. But, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I just want to give you a heads up on that. <laughs> um <laughs> Because it's funny, you see, as you're talking, the microphone's just dropped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. It's a, it's a cheap <laughs> microphone stand. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> if your life was a comic book, what would its title be? And what would its soundtrack be? That's such a tough one. Okay, I'll start. I, I, I made some personal stupid comic books of my own, so I turned myself into a comic book character already. They're kind of boring comic books because well, my life is not that exciting outside the comics that I do. Uh, the soundtrack, that's a, that's a tough one, but maybe something quite annoying, like uh, that uh, South African band, The Antwort or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be the protagonist and most of the shit that happens in that comic book will be characters that are on my mind, nagging me. Oh, the title. God damn the title. It will be something like Locomotion go, Goes West or Locomotion Goes South. Good, good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, how about you? Embarrassed to say, I have written like two Ramona Clef's uh, autobio fictions in my, my life. So uh, maybe, and I, I have a one of my favorite um, quotes is from a, a a song Jack Kerouac wrote. So I use that a lot, which is uh, it's oh the worms eat away, but don't worry, watch the wind. So I'll probably probably will call it don't worry, watch the wind. Or like reliable dissonance or something like that, and I think that the soundtrack would probably be like a bunch of folk folk punk bands. So hard to listen to unless you really like it, I guess. <laughs> All right, favorite folk punk band? Uh, Mischief Brew. Yeah. yeah, I was. Uh, I born in the same town as the uh, the singer. Nice. 
There you go. <laughs> uh, famous by association. <laughs> Well, Tom and Luciana, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you both so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Before I let you both go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Of course, where is Junction Jones and the Corduroy Conspiracy? Anything else you would you would both like to promote? Uh, yeah, uh, Junction Jones is on the Scout Comics website, and uh, I guess a bunch of you're, you know, your local comic store. If you uh, talk to your LCS, you can get it on your pool list. Uh, third issue is coming soon. And uh, I, uh, I am mostly just on Instagram, uh, TC Pesky. Yes, uh, you put Locomotion Gonzalez in any social media, or most of them at least, especially in Instagram. And you'll find me. Please follow me. I want eyes on me i want likes i want hearts and i want your love locomotion gonzalez awesome well like i said that ends this particular episode of two geeks talk you can of course find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website uh, tgtmedia.com or two geeks talking.com that's t-w-o not the number two totally different website you don't want to go to website is going through a revamp which is uh because i'm only one person so go to our youtube channel which is definitely always updated youtube.com forward slash tgt media the podcast is back after 12 or so years you can find that at two geeks talking.podbean.com or just search search for two geeks talking wherever you get your podcasts and as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on to Geeks Talking.